Hi everyone, I hope you're all well on this cold and wet Monday morning. And my mood is still seesawing mainly due to the fact that I am still no closer to a solution for the three doggies I'm feeding. I found the pounds this morning and was instantly told no, they can't take them. They were forced last week by the local municipality to euthanize about 14 dogs. I just can't handle that. These are three young and healthy animals, and I would rather continue feeding them, quite frankly. The problem is not feeding them, but getting them off the street. It is almost winter, it is cold and dangerous as we live just off a busy road. I would love to take them in, particularly the little white Jack Russell, but I can't, as Yellow Dog or Akira does not and cannot abide with another animal. It will be totally impossible. I found every shelter or foster in the area and nobody can help. They can only help to advertise the doggies and hopefully find them homes. So. Another day of worry and praying for doggies to make it one more day. At least their food is cooked already and I'll go feed them around lunchtime. I normally or have been doing it around midday for the past two weeks so that hopefully the food can last them through the night. Yesterday they didn't finish all their food and I left the one bowl out for them just to get there this morning and find that the bowl was taken and now it's gone so i will have to look for another one anyway there's always something isn't there (laughs) so let's rather talk royals and not so royals and sometimes i look at the entire shit show that it has turned into and i can just shake my head in awe So much of drama and falsehood I've not seen on any daytime soap ever. And I honestly cringe for every royal reporter, every journalist who are making up stories in a desperate effort to make it all look better, to create that false facade which is meant to gaslight us into believing in the fairy tale again. Well, like my father always said, even the queen shits just like you. And never ever before has it sunk in like it has now. I don't know what I thought before, that the queen used a golden throne and flushed with rose water or I darn well don't know. But whatever it was, that bubble has now been thoroughly burst forever. For the next few days or week or two, and for the very last time, I shall try to look at every anomaly concerning Harry and Meghan and their Hollywood lifestyle, their work in inverted commas, and I will highlight for you what does not make sense and why. Eventually, I will send every link to Kensington Palace and Buckingham Palace as a form of complaint. And that is it. If no response or no action, then whatever will be, will be. Maybe I'll go on a crusade to get my country to resign from the Commonwealth. I don't know. That is a discussion for another day. Okay, so let's go. We know... The Spotify story. Harry and Meghan were offered a truckload full of money. More than most creators, maybe with the exception of Joe Rogan, has ever been offered. A number of artists were very, very pissed off because they had supported the platform for ages and got much, much less. So angry were some that they left Spotify. And then? Then Harry and Meghan produced nothing for ages. Nada. And then finally, 12 episodes of word salad drivel and lies over a period of just two years. 
and only after Spotify offered them a staff contingent of about 30 people and four or five of their own were roped in. And that is not all. Then it came out that Megan did not even interview all the women on her show. No, they were interviewed by someone else, and it was cut in to sound like Megan had a two-way conversation with them. The then Spotify CEO came out and called them effing grifters, and although Megan leaked to the papers that she had huge deals offered to her by the likes of Amazon, nothing came off it. And then we heard she got some kind of deal with a no-name brand streaming platform called Lemonada. And all we had from them are the original recordings sold to them by Spotify. Nothing new. Okay, so it's obvious that they are not really interested in proving the Spotify CEO wrong, are they? Anyway, then there is Netflix. Except for the six-episode Moanfest, the rest of the offerings were meager and boring. Except for the Moanfest, I truly do not know of anyone who has indeed watched any of the other offerings, the one being obviously Heart of Invectors and the other one Live to Lead, which was not even produced by Meghan and Harry, but which they bought from the Mandela Foundation. Now they are going to produce a cooking, entertaining and gardening show and one on professional polo. I mean, yawn, fest, par excellence. But I guess it fits with Megan's narcissism. The, oh, come look at my stunning kitchen. Oh, look at my garden. At my nine bedrooms, 16 bathroom mansion. Just don't mention that I have three illegal immigrants working in the garden and that I treat them like slaves. <laughs> Look, I don't know who works in her garden. I'm just joking. But again, these offerings sound like vanity, bragging projects to me. And honestly, I've seen and read about all Megan's favorite food. I mean, things like avocado toast and aquai, which is a palm fruit. Bowls consisting of a packet of aquai, a banana almond milk topped with fresh berries, coconut flakes, more banana, manuka honey, and bee pollen. Yeah, I looked at the prices six dollars for almond milk, a two hundred and fifty gram container of manuka honey is about twenty dollars on Amazon. Actually on Amazon eight point eight ounces is thirty five dollars. Pollen is about 15 to $25 per pound. So yes, baby shoes, not only will she get to brag about her home, but also about the very costly items in her pantry. I personally do not know of many people who can afford daily breakfast of, say, $40 per person. So guaranteed her cooking show will be elitist word salad rubbish. A vanity project. Now, I'm also hearing that the Polo series will also feature behind-the-scenes footage. You know, the struggles of the mega-rich. How hard they have to struggle to get to practice and get to all those tournaments and their private jets. How difficult it is to stay in top-notch hotels away from their families. I mean, really. Anyway, what I really want to know is how and why. We knew Harry and Meghan, the six-part documentary, would do well because we still wanted to hear what they were moaning about. We wanted to know which daggers they would pull. But that was it. How many of us watched Live to Lead or Heart of Invictus? As a matter of fact, 
I do have Netflix. And I did not even know that Heart of Invictus has been screened yet. And I'm being serious. <laughs> so, why is Netflix continuing to indulge Harry and Meghan? About a year ago, Netflix cut back a little and culled some of the shows, all of which would have been 10 times better than Megan gliding through her kitchen while whispering word salad. <laughs> and I'm almost sure that all those shows Netflix dropped would have been 50 times better than the animal abuser, the man who rode his polo pony to death, presenting a show on polo and pretending he gives a shit about the horses. I don't think Netflix CEOs are stupid. They have come this far. They can't be stupid. So what is going on? We know that the contract between Harry and Meghan and Netflix ran over a five-year period for approximately $100 million. But is the six-part Harry and Meghan documentary, Heart of Invictus, Live to Lead, a cookery show and one on polo worth $100 million? I don't think so. So again, why is Netflix continuing to indulge them? Who is paying Netflix a hundred million to keep Harry and Meghan employed? Because, my dear friends, that is what it looks like. Is it possible or am I going crazy? I cannot see Netflix just prepare to continue writing off money in terms of membership and ad revenue for absolutely no reason. So what is the true story? What is going on with the Harkles and Netflix? Who is paying the production staff and production companies working on these new programs? I mean, they don't come cheap. Face it. Meghan and Harry have not earned enough money from the little they did since moving to the United States to maintain the home they're in, the lifestyle they have, you know, all those private planes, and pay a professional film crew and production company. So who is bankrolling all of this? and why? Okay, guys, this is by no means all of the questions I have. So later or tomorrow, we are going to continue with where is Waldo? <laughs> okay, guys, so until then, take good care of yourselves until we meet again on that one tomorrow. Bye.